Three tips to calm the weight loss rebel. Today I want to talk about what many diets and health eating approaches rarely talk about. The voice inside our head that doesn't want to do it. That doesn't want to make changes. It's the resistance, the self-doubt that says it doesn't think this is going to work or you're not going to be able to stay the course. It's like your heels and just digging in. It's like like a little kid inside saying, no, I don't want to do it. So here's what most of us do. We try to talk over this inner rebel voice, this inner resistance. We try to squash it down with our willpower. We think that with just enough will, and if we pump ourselves up enough, then we'll be able to silence this inner voice and we'll get what it is we want and get to where we want to go. But here is the problem with this approach. And I know you already know this because I know you've experienced this. We cannot ignore this voice for long. It's louder and stronger than your willpower. It's insistent and it wears at your good intentions and it eventually breaks through and it feels like we're being possessed and taken over. We then eat what we want to eat or we'll eat till we're stuffed. And when that inner voice and that hunger has calmed down and quietened down, another voice appears. I shouldn't have done that. How could I have done that? And depending on how strong your inner critic is, you may begin to beat yourself up internally, telling yourself things like, God, I feel like a loser. I failed again. This is too hard. Maybe I should just get used to being fat. I'm just going to get used to being, I'm a foodaholic, I'm a chocoholic, or whatever your weakness happens to be. Or maybe there's another side that's a little bit more sneaky that begins to justify why you don't want to have to keep feeling the pain of not being able to get it right. Well, I'm beautiful as I am. My partner loves me as I am. It's not that bad being overweight. Everyone else is overweight. I eat fairly healthy anyway. So what's the big deal? That also happened to be my justification till I discovered I had pre-diabetes and then I realized I couldn't use that and I needed to do something different. It might feel good for a short time to let go of all that control and let go of the restrictions and to indulge a little bit, to enjoy that reward after a hard day or a stressful day. It feels good to calm that hunger, to relax and feel at peace, even if it's just for a few moments. But here is the problem. We don't let this demon, as we call it, have a voice. And when we don't let it speak, it's going to eventually take over because that part of us that is trying to say something, that's trying to have a voice, is backed up by our subconscious mind. And our subconscious mind makes up 85% of our mind. We do not stand a chance against that much force. So the bottom line here is this voice needs to be heard. We need to let it speak. And it's serving a very important purpose. It's actually not a demon. It actually has our best interests at heart. It's protecting you. It's keeping you safe from something far worse than getting high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, or all the other side effects of carrying too much weight. It's helping you to feel better. It's soothing you. It's rewarding you with good feelings. It's taking you out of bad feelings. It's making life pleasurable. And the strongest motivator that evolution has given us for survival is to move towards pleasure and away from pain. So we need to hear what it's protecting us from. We need to hear it and let it speak. And you can do this in one of three ways. The first way is you can journal using your non-dominant hands to be the voice of your subconscious and your dominant hand to be your conscious mind. So these two sides can have a conversation. Talk to it, ask it what it's doing, why it's resisting, what it wants to say, what is it feeling, what is it of not wanting to feel. And let this part speak, just give it full reign. And you're probably going to find there's going to be a lot of anger there 
And it might be the sound of a, a very young child, or it might be a toddler, or an eighth grader, or a teenager. Ask it how old it is. And listen to it as a mature adult would listen to a hurt child or a child who's not been allowed to speak. This can be a very powerful, transformative exercise. If you are not a writer, you can do this by taking two chairs. So this is the other way you can do it. Get two chairs and you can sit on both chairs. On one chair, you can be the voice of this inner voice of this resistance. On the other side, you can be the mature person, the mature adult listening. So have a conversation, get really curious, let that part speak. And here's a third technique for releasing, clearing out this resistance. And this is using the self-help technique of emotional freedom technique, otherwise known as tapping. And if you haven't heard of it, it's a very simple technique that gives you more control over your own healing process. It's very effective and it's beginning to be used now by mainstream medicine. And they're using it now because they're finding it actually works. It's very easy to learn and use. And the way it works is by tapping lightly over the endpoints of energy meridians just below the surface of the skin. So by lightly tapping on these points, as you tune into whatever is bothering you, it will help to restore the natural flow of energy through these energy pathways. So let me lead you through a tapping exercise. So first of all, close your eyes and take a few deep breaths just to kind of settle yourself, get into your body, really tune into your body and just start noticing what you're feeling right now when you think about this resistance. Think about what it is you want to do, if you want to eat healthy or if you want to exercise more and just feel the resistance and be aware of where in your body you are feeling this. What does it feel like? It might be some tightness in the chest, maybe a knot in the solar plexus, or maybe it's just a generalized sensation of just shutting down of, of like a big no. And when you tune into that sensation, give it a number in terms of intensity, give it a number between one and 10, 10 being incredibly intense and very strong, and one being it's not such a big deal. And then just take note of that number. <clears throat> so we're going to start tapping on the side of the hand, which is called the karate chop point. So it's the side of the hand as though we're going to do a karate chop. So tune into the resistance of not wanting to do what it is you say you want to do. And we're just going to acknowledge how you're feeling. So repeat these words or really, or you can repeat them internally or out loud. Even though I feel this resistance to eating healthy, I accept myself. Even though I feel this resistance to eating healthy, I'm going to honor this feeling. Even though I really don't want to eat healthy, it's too much bother, it's too hard. I honor this resistance. So now start tapping on the center and top of your head. And then repeat, this resistance, and really notice and tune into the resistance in your body. Now begin tapping on the inner edge of the eyebrow, closest to the bridge of the nose. Just a couple of fingers there, tapping lightly. This resistance in my chest, or wherever you're feeling it. <clears throat> Side of the eye, the hard area, just between the eye and the temple. This resistance to eating healthy. Again, make sure you really feel the resistance in your body giving it a voice, giving it a chance to be heard. Tapping under the eye, on that bony part there. I don't feel like doing it. Under the nose, the point center between the bottom of the nose and the upper lip. I don't want to do it. Tapping on the chin, 
that center between the bottom of the lower lip and the chin, it's too hard. Collarbone. Tap just below the hard ridge of the collarbone. I feel, I'll feel deprived. Under the arm. That's about four inches beneath the armpit. It will be too hard. It'll be too uncomfortable. Okay, and then go back to the top of the head again. I don't want to do it. In the edge of the eyebrow, this resistance side of the eye. I feel it in my body, under the eye. It feels uncomfortable under the nose. Why should I make myself uncomfortable? Chin, I already feel uncomfortable. Collarbone, this resistance in my body, under the arm. It's in my mind as well. Top of the head, I just don't want to do it. Inner edge of the eyebrow, even though a part of me knows it will bring me so much. Side of the eye, it will make me feel better in the long run. Under the eye, it'll be a way to nourish my body. Under the nose, it'll be a way to release excess weight from my body. Chin, it will allow vitality and energy to flow more naturally and easily. Collarbone, but I don't want to do the work. Under the arm, it's too hard. Top of the head again. Maybe there's something else that stopped me from doing what I want to do. Inner edge of the eyebrow. Maybe this is reminding me of being told what to do as a child. Side of the eye. Maybe it's reminded me of times when I was made to do something. Under the eye. And I wasn't given a choice. Under the nose. But that was when I was a child. Chin. And now I'm an adult. Collarbone. And now I have free will. Under the arm. I cannot acknowledge this inner child and her resistance. I understand it top of the head. Tell her I understand she's trying to be heard. In the edge of the eyebrow, I'm telling her I hear her. I understand why she's digging her heels in. Side of the eye. She was not respected. Her feelings were not heard. Under the eye. But now I hear her and I'm telling her it's okay under the nose. I'm not going to force her to do anything she doesn't want. Chin. I'm here to support her as an adult and gently show her and explain how each choice we make will make her and help her in the long run. Collarbone. I'm going to ask her how I can make these changes more exciting, fun, easier for her under the arm and I'm going to listen. Top of the head. After all, she's my little girl and I love her. Inner edge of the eyebrow and I care about her. Side of the eye. And we're going to do this together. Under the eye. This could be fun. Under the nose. Maybe this could be a lot easier than I thought. Chin. Maybe if I'm firm, gentle and kind, my little girl will be more willing to come along for the ride. Collarbone. Maybe if I explain things to her, she'll be more open. Under the arm. I think I'll give that a try. Okay, so take a deep breath. And again, tune into that resistance. And notice how intense that resistance is now. And give it a number on the scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, 1 being hardly anything at all, and see if that number has shifted. So if it hasn't shifted, you can keep tapping on the resistance, giving it a voice till that feeling and intensity comes down. If it has shifted, that's great. It's going to make things easier for you. You can keep tapping till that number comes down, all the way down to a 1s or a 2. 
If you find the numbers increase, just know that you've probably tuned into more emotional charge that's been buried. And by tapping, you're going to be able to release some of that energy and free it up. So if you found doing any of these techniques have uncovered a lot of unprocessed feelings and you feel like you're getting stuck and you want to be able to talk about them, get a little bit more direction, I have open office hours on Monday afternoons and Wednesday mornings. So if you want to set up a time where we can just chat, I can help you with what's going on, help get a little bit clearer. And you can find that link to my calendar in the description below. So just to recap, the part of you that's resisting and appears to be sabotaging your best efforts is at the root trying to protect you. It has something it wants to say, so give it a voice. And it's way too powerful just to ignore it. So don't try to ignore it. Don't use your willpower to squash it. That will just make things worse. So be curious, be kind and be compassionate. So my name is Christine Lacidra. I'm a long-term transformational weight loss coach. And if you want to know more about how I work, you can go to my website at resetmyweight.com. And you can also contact me via my website under the contact tab. And you can find my calendar there as well.